Hello everybody! In this Python tutorial we're going to go over how to create a basic bar chart using Python and matplotlib. So the first thing we want to do is import matplotlib and numpy. Okay, so we went ahead and imported matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So we've assigned that to plt, and when we want to use parts of the matplotlib.pyplot package or module, we can just simply type out plt and then use a dot to access those parts. Then here we just did a import of numpy. Then the next thing we want to do is create our x and y data and values. So for our y values, we're going to go ahead and use some historical stock data from the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we're going to go ahead and put those in a list. So let's go ahead and type that out. Okay, so what we have here are the index numbers for the Dow Jones Industrial Average starting in 2013, 2014, 15, 16, and 2017. And these are the index numbers as of January 1st for each of those years as according to Yahoo Finance. So the next thing we want to do is create our X values. And for now, these values will kind of serve as a placeholder to help us make our plot or the bars for our chart on the horizontal X axis. So let's go ahead and type that out. Okay, so we use our NumPy module, and then we use a dot to access a range, which is very similar to our normal range, where you can, if you'd like, put in a start and a stop and a step. In this case, we just put in a stop, and we used our length function, and inside the length function round brackets, we put our y values. So that way, our x values can easily correspond to our y values. Now, one thing you can do to easily see what's going on here is let's go ahead and print out the values for our x-axis and show you what it currently consists of. So let's use a loop. And then we'll use a print to go ahead and display it. So we're going to go ahead and loop through these values. Now let's go up here and click the Run button. And you can see over here in the console that our x-axis values currently consists of 0 through 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase this. And let's keep going. So the next thing we want to do is create our bar chart. So let's go ahead and type out that code and then we'll go over it. Okay, so the first thing we did is we typed out PLT and then we use a dot to access the bar. Here's a little information about the bar. And then inside the bar round brackets, we go ahead and put our arguments. Now the first argument that we created here corresponds to our x values, okay? And you don't have to type out left if you don't want to. You could just put x. And then our second argument is the height, which corresponds to the y values. And then we went ahead and specified the width for the bars and then the color for the bars. Now before we go any further, one thing to note, very often to go ahead and generate your plot and to create your bar chart, after your code, you want to type out plt.show, okay? I don't believe you have to do that in Spider, but in other text editors and IDEs, often you do have to do that. Now back up to our plt.bar, let's go over just a couple more things to go into more detail on the left. As we mentioned, those are the x arguments, and those are specifically the x coordinates of the left sides of the bars, okay? Now we didn't use a line in our round brackets, but if you'd like to, you can assign a center to help center things, or you can assign an edge. So if you need to adjust where your bars are located, or at least where it looks like they're located, you can use the align. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what we get so far. Okay, so you can see over here in the console, we get our bar chart. Now so far we have our x-axis values down here on the bottom and remember we created those here and we used the for loop in the print statement to show you that the values would be 0 through 4 and that's what's showing on the bottom. 
Then here we have our y-axis values. And then of course we have our bars for each time period. And each bar is the appropriate height to indicate the appropriate value. So this zero value should be 13,860. All the way up to this four value should be 19,864, which we specified all those values here. Now just to show you what happens when we put in this align argument, Let's go ahead and put in a line. And in this case, let's just put in edge and see what this does. Let's run it. And you can see that the tick mark values, 0 through 4, has moved over to the left edge. Now, we could put that on the right edge. It probably won't look very good. But one way to do that is just simply change the value of your width to a negative number. Let's run it. OK, well, it doesn't look too bad, but it did move them over. So that's just a quick example of a line. Let's get rid of this negative sign. Let's change this to center and run it. And now we have our X tick labels back to the center of the bar. If you get rid of that altogether, I believe it defaults to center. Let's run it again and it defaults to the center. Okay, so that's the code to create your bar chart. And we've gone ahead and assigned all of that to a variable. And we're going to use that variable here in just a little bit. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is create a title for our chart. And to do that, we're just going to type out plt dot title. And let's give this the title of Dow J, short for Dow Jones Stock Market Index. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see now we have a title. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and label our X and Y axis. So to create your X axis label, we type out plt dot X label. And then in the round brackets, inside quotes, we create the label. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the Y axis label. Let's go ahead and run it. And now we have the label down here on the bottom for our x-axis and the label over here for our y-axis. Okay, so if you look at our chart here, down here on the bottom on the x-axis, we just have some somewhat arbitrary numbers that aren't very helpful or useful. So what we want to do is to assign some real labels to those. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so to create our x-axis labels, we use plt.ticks. Okay, so inside the ticks round brackets, your first argument here sets the locations for the ticks and their corresponding labels. Okay, so very similar to the example we showed up here, when we used a for loop to print out those values, this is also going to create some values. And those will correspond to these labels here on the x axis. OK, so this will create the locations on the x axis. And then these dates will correspond to those locations and be placed on the x axis. And just a couple more details. Notice that the number of elements in this list matches the number of elements in our list up here, OK? And they do correspond. So for this date here, 2013, that corresponds to this first number here. And for 2014, that corresponds to this number. 2015, that corresponds to this number, and so on. So let's go ahead and run this and see if this will add our x-axis labels appropriately. We got a little error here, and that's easy to fix. What we need to do is just add x ticks here to the plot. Let's go ahead and clear that and run it again. OK, and now you can see that we have our x-axis labels added to our x-axis. So we have 2013, 2014, 15, 16, and 17. Now real quick, if you'd like to see some information on the x ticks, let's go ahead and pull up that information. And as we mentioned before, you can see that inside the x ticks round brackets, your first argument is where you set the locations. 
And then the second argument are the labels for the X ticks. Okay, let's go ahead and close that. Now, currently, the background here for our chart is white, but let's say that you wanted to change it to a different color, and let's say you wanted to change it to yellow. So let's show you how to do that. Okay, so one way to change the chart background color is to use this code here, plt.rcparams, and then inside the square brackets, inside the quotes, we put axis.facecolor equals yellow. Let's go ahead and run that. And sometimes you have to run it more than once. Okay, so we had to run it twice. I'm not exactly sure why, but we did. We ran it twice, and it did change the color of the background. Now, as I mentioned, this is just one way to do this. There's several other ways that you can change different colors of your chart, and we'll go over some of those ways in future tutorials. Moving on, another thing you might want to do is to add the specific numbers associated with each bar above the bar. So let's go over a way to do that. Okay, so the first thing we did here is we created a for loop, and that is going to allow us to iterate through the different bars of the bar chart. So we said for bar in bar chart, and we created the bar chart variable up here. Then the next thing we did here is we created our height, and to do that, we just use our bar, which we created in our for loop, so it will iterate through and get each bar and then a dot to get the height for each bar. Then to create the text that will go above each bar, we use plt.text, and then there's several different arguments inside the text round brackets that we need to specify. So let's go ahead and show some information for the text. And you can see over here on the help screen, the main arguments that it will take is the X values, the Y values, the S, which is the string. And then there are several other arguments that you can put in if you'd like. So let's go over the X, Y, and S. Okay, so for the first argument X, we've created our code here. And that basically will help us create the X coordinate information for the text placement. To create the code for the Y argument, you can see our code here. And again, that helps us to create the Y coordinate information for the text placement. And here we have created the code for the string. Now we went ahead and used a type of string interpolation and the format, and that's going to assign the height to the string and put that above our bar. Now inside these curly brackets here, notice this special syntax. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to add the thousands separators to the number. And then finally, we did go ahead and create a horizontal alignment argument, and we set that to center. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see over here in the console, now we have our specific values that correspond to each bar above each bar. Now there's one little thing that doesn't look very good, and that's this number here for the last bar. Now let's go over some code on how we might be able to fix that. Okay, so one thing you can do to control your X and Y axis values is to use the plt.axis and then inside the round brackets and inside square brackets, you define your x-axis minimum and maximum and then your y-axis minimum and maximum. Now we put in some numbers here and I had to play with this a little bit to get it to look just right. But for the x minimum, we put in negative 0.5. For the x maximum, we put in 4.5. For the y minimum, we put in zero. And for the y maximum, we put in 2300. So let's go ahead and run this and it should fix this last bar number so it's inside the chart and it does okay so what it did is it raised the y vertical axis maximum to a larger number and gave us more space up here at the top now let's just go over a few more details before we finish up as we mentioned earlier for this plot dot bar you don't have to put in left equals x or height equals the y 
you can actually take those out like that and that and run it and everything should run the same okay now another thing on the formatting for our string here notice that we wrapped our height in an int to turn it into an integer now if you take that out like that and run it notice what happens to our numbers over here okay we have a decimal point and a zero after that so if you'd like to get rid of that decimal and the zero you can go ahead and wrap that in the int and that should fix that and a lot of times when you're dealing with larger numbers or numbers that need a thousands separator it's good to go ahead and put that separator in and as we mentioned to do that we use this syntax here inside the curly brackets but if you don't want that thousands separator you should be able to just get rid of that and let's run it again and now you can see that we have our numbers on top of each bar without the thousands separator now let's go ahead and add that back and run it again and now we have our thousands separator back okay so that's it for this python tutorial on how to create a basic bar chart using matplotlib.pyplot and numpy we will be doing many more python tutorials in the near future join us for those and we'll see you next time